Hello and welcome to the $10 test bench and my faulty Heath kit IM16. Now I had just begun working on the Heath kit oscilloscope that's going to be in another video or is in another video. I don't know what sequence I'll put these up. <clears throat> and I turned on my IM16 and it was working and I started dragging the scope over and getting test probes ready to do some tests and when I look back at the meter the meter was slammed down against the hard stop over here and we can see I don't know if it shows up in the video but it's bouncing <clears throat> excuse me and if I go to DC minus it swings way up here and if I look very closely I can see some vibration and yet, if I put it on the battery position and run it from the internal battery and switch between the two, the meter's working just fine. The zero balance control is working. You can probably see the needle going up and down. But as soon as I go to line, the needle pegs in the minus direction. If I put it on minus DC, the zero just has no effect. It's not functional. I think you've already guessed what the problem is. Something's died in the internal power supply in this unit, and we're getting AC into the power into the uh, DC bus. Is my suspicion. I haven't pulled the covers off yet. I'm going to do it right now, and you can ride along with me and see what's happening. But I suspect one of the filter capacitors has died in the internal power supply. So I'm going to turn this thing off, get the covers off and we'll start again. Okay, and as we suspected, the electrolytic capacitor, filter capacitor in the DC power supply circuit has failed. This, I believe, is an original Heath kit. It's got a part number on it, I think is the Heath kit part number. I didn't check it in the book, but it's a 250 microfarad 25 volt, and I went down to the lab. Much to my chagrin, I am out of axial leaded 250 and 300 microfarad capacitors. But we put this on the ESR meter, and you can see it just reads overload. It's totally open. It's just failed totally open in the last few minutes. But I did have a Secondhand 220 microfarad. This is rated at 25 volts. This is rated at 35 and I have a 50 at 50 volts So we have a total of 270 microfarad at slightly more working voltage than the original This should do us until I can get some new capacitors in and we have an ESR of 0.1 ohms Whoops, no, I got the right polarity 0.1 ohms Let's short these together and see what we have here. 0.014, so we'll zero that. I said we'll zero that. <clears throat> and check, take a look at it again. Yeah, 0.1 ohms. That's pretty decent. So we'll put these caps in. The meter will be back in business and we can get back to our oscilloscope. Now I know somebody is out there going to say, why didn't you change it in the beginning? Time. Uh, we have a lot of this equipment. I had checked this capacitor. It was fine when I got the unit in. I said I'll leave it in until uh, I get around to changing it. And it's forcing me to do it at this point in time. But anyway, the meter will be back in business here shortly and we can get on with the oscilloscope. So that's it for the heat And our meter is back in position. And again, fully functional. We're on the line position. The needle's on zero. I switch between plus and minus DC volts and everything is fine again. If I switch to battery, there's probably going to be a shift because of the voltage differential. However, I should be able to zero that right out. And everything's fine. So it'll run on battery now and it'll run on line. And again, you know, the difference in voltage is going to make a difference in the balance. Theoretically, it shouldn't, but you know, these scopes are, yeah, these scopes, these meters are not thousand dollar meters. They're very simple, very accurate, and they work well, but they're simple. The beauty of this is it will run on battery. <clears throat> and if you unplug the unit, isolate it from ground, and run it on battery, you can use these safely with AC DC radios if you don't have a, an isolation transformer. 
You should always use an isolation transformer, but should you run into a case where you don't have one available, you can remove the line cord from the, from the plug and operate this on battery, keeping in mind that this will now be live along with the chassis of the All-American 5 AC-DC series string radio. I've seen a lot of techs over the years, these used to be actually in a lot of TV and radio repair shops, and would simply cut the ground plug off and use it on AC as isolated. I don't buy into that strategy. It works, but if something goes wrong with the transformer, guess what? And these were not top of the line transformers. Let's face it, Heathkit was built down to a price. They made some nice equipment, but let's not push our luck. At any rate, we're back on. This is up and working. Now somebody out there might say, why didn't I just throw in a thousand microfarad? I could have done that. It wouldn't have hurt the circuit as far as operation goes. And I see a lot of people do that. They'll pull out a 250 and throw a thousand microfarad in. What you have to be aware of is inrush, especially in a power supply like this with these older uh, silicon diodes they weren't rated for a lot of current. Some of these diodes might have only been rated for half an amp, three quarters of an amp. And if you put a thousand microfarad capacitor in there, the inrush current is going to be very high. A thousand microfarad capacitor is going to look like a dead short for a few milliseconds. And repeated off and on cycles could take out the rectifier diode. And of course, yeah, you can upgrade the rectifier diode, but you're stressing everything else in the circuit. I could safely, I think, go it up to 500 microfarad without a problem. I wouldn't push it to 1,000. Uh, this had 250. It now has 270. I feel perfectly safe with that. That's probably within the tolerance of this capacitor anyway, if you figure 20% on most of this stuff or more. So anyway, back in business. 